All right. So we're in the second week of content marketing. This is a really fun lesson for me. Out of probably everything that we teach throughout the whole SEO Unlocked program, last week and this week is probably the funnest for me. And the reason being is I love content marketing. It just works, right? And as I mentioned last week, right, with the same quote, don't look back and ask why. Look ahead and ask why not. It's just so effective. If you're not doing content marketing, you're messing up. There's just so much traffic potential out there. You have no choice but to do it. So as I mentioned, second week of content marketing. Next week's also another fun week. We get into link building. And then from there, you know, the future weeks will get into optimization. So here's some successful businesses who are using content marketing. You hear about it all the time, but no one really talks about their revenue. Now, Gizmodo does way more than $325,000 a month at this point. They probably do quite a bit more than that. TechCrunch does a good amount of money. Huffington Post makes an amazing amount of money. Smashing Magazine. Uh, all these are examples of people who are just crushing because of content marketing. And as I broke down last week, you guys should have the worksheet, ideas for titles, right, in your Google Sheet. And you should have the 2020 rule book. I'm hoping you guys filled out the worksheet with titles because that'll be useful this week as I'm giving you my presentation. And the guidelines will, of course, help you in your writing process. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is there's many different content types. And you can use the same information over and over again. And I'll get into it. But an example of this is, let's say I create a whole article on you know, SEO and how to rank higher in Google. I can create a video with that same material. Or I can take that content and repurpose it on LinkedIn. Or I can take a portion of it and put it on Facebook, right? These are all examples of content types and reusing them. So one of the most common content types that you guys are familiar with is lists. That's scannable content that works at pretty much almost any different level. It doesn't matter if people are advanced, beginners, intermediates. Lists are pretty much effective. That's why you see them on magazine covers when you're walking out on a grocery store aisle, right? Everyone always shows it during the checkout, like, oh, seven ways to burn fat while eating Snickers bars, right? Or seven ways to burn fat while Big Nesh spends $500 of candy and throws it in your office. The other thing with lists is it just is so easy to follow along. You know, it's one, two, three, et cetera, right? You want to make sure when you're doing lists that you're greater than five list items. Ideally, greater than 10 or even 20. The more thorough, the better off you are because so many people have already created lists on everything out there that are like four or five or 10 steps. And that's why you want to have super detailed lists. If you don't, think about it. You've already read 10 ways to double your SEO traffic. You want 101 ways, right? You've probably already implemented all the other 10 ways or a portion of them. And that's why detailed lists tend to do better. Here's an example of lists that has done well on my website. If you look at some of my most popular content, 38 content marketing stats that every marketer needs to know. Is done extremely well, right? Why? Just because it's list-based, people love it. Interviews, another form that does really well. Now, if you look at any magazines, they all tend to have interviews within their issues. But here's the cool thing. For your blog, you can interview experts just like magazines do. It's great because these type of content pieces are more conversational. You end up building relationships with these influencers and at the end, you can ask them one simple question. Who else do you know that I should interview? By doing that, you'll get to know more and more influencers. You'll build relationships. You'll end up gathering a lot of links from this because these people will end up promoting it to their social you know, profiles, which gets you more visitors. And indirectly, that'll cause more people to link to you. And of course, you can record the interviews and use audio files, video files. You can do text transcripts. You can do many different forms. One of my favorite content types that I don't know why, but people have slowed down on creating are infographics. At Kiss Metrics, they helped us generate over 2.5 million visitors, 41,000 backlinks, over 3,000 unique referring domains, and that was all through 47 infographics. 
that's the power of them, right? It's just like, it's amazing. The power of it is if we only spent 28 grand to create these infographics, and if we had to pay for all those links and visitors, it would have ended up costing us over $948,000. And keep in mind, as time goes on, that number keeps going up. So it's like 28 grand worth of spend for maybe in a year from now, $1.5 million worth of traffic, right? Such a huge ROI. Not just because you're getting traffic from the social web, you're getting all these links, which is then boosting your total Google traffic. And the cool part about infographics is you don't have to create tons and tons of text, right? It's all pretty much image based. So with Kissmetrics, if you type in our URL into Ahrefs, you'll see that some of our most popular posts, especially from a backlink standpoint, is infographics, right? How, how ah, sorry about that tongue twister there, at least on my end. How loading time affects your bottom line. That's an infographic. How do colors affect purchases? That's an infographic, right? All examples of post content that do extremely well. You can also create content just for social media. So like if you have a Facebook fan page, you create content, Facebook from their insights shows you what has the most engagement, reactions, comments, shares, create more of that content. The stuff that doesn't do well, create less of that content. It's that simple, easy peasy. And if you're not sure what do, does well, go look at your competitor's social media page, go see what they're putting, and you'll find out really quickly what's doing well in your space and what's not. Videos. I've been doing a lot of uh, videos with my Neil Knowledge series. You guys can see it. I'm getting over 100,000 views a month. It's kind of crazy on the numbers we're getting. Um, I know a lot of people are like, Neil, with your audience, you should be getting like a half a million. Like, I hate to say in B2B, you're not going to go from zero to half a million views a month that quickly, especially on YouTube when the views count as 30 seconds or more, right? It takes time to build it up. But it's growing each month. I just did a deal with Entrepreneur Magazine where they syndicate all of our videos. And we think our video views are going to go from a hundred and something thousand a month. Uh, they think at minimum they'll drive another 300,000 views a month. So it'll start getting close to that half a million mark, which is kind of cool. And they get a lot of shares. You can see this. You can go to like BuzzSumo and see what kind of video content's doing well in your space. And videos are a great other form of content because what I found is videos get different types of views, uh, different type of audience. Some people will want to watch videos. Some people want to read the text. Some people want to listen to podcasts. You pretty much got to do it all. Webinars. As you see, I do webinars as well. People love them. The more webinars you create, the better off you are. So go out there, create a ton of them. They're educational. It's an amazing way to also generate leads from these webinars. They're probably one of the highest conversions from lead generation. Tools. I love tools. The most popular page on Neil Patel other than the home page or the blog page is a tools page. It's the SEO analyzer page. I even integrated tools onto one of my pages that talks about starting a blog. Tools work really well. Uber suggests I own this as well. Another tool. It's actually even more popular than the SEO analyzer page. I need to work on integrating onto the Neil Patel site. Um, but again, just shows that tools are really powerful. So here's the example, right? Put in the Neil Patel, the SEO analyzer, it's there. It has the most traffic. You can see on the left side, it's number one. Then the what is SEO and some of the other pages, but from a Google standpoint, the tool generates the most visits. Here's the example for Moz, another software company who creates tools. Look at number two. It's their open site explorer. That's a backlink tool. Look at number six, follower wonk, which is their social media analytics tool, right? It's all tools. Number eight, the Moz bar. This all helps. Checklists. I don't see a lot of people creating checklist content. I don't know why what I mean creating it. Not just saying here's a checklist, but having like engaging content where they can check it off like as if they've done it. Um, and it's not that hard to create this kind of content. You can go find a developer on Upwork to do this for you for like 50 bucks. It's really cheap. It's engaging. People keep coming back and it does well. Or you can start doing hybrid content like me where a lot of my content now has text and videos from me, right? I'm doing a bit of a mixture of everything. And I found that it's working quite well. You can also do challenges uh, or case studies. Like I did my 100K challenge. And in that challenge, some of you guys may follow, some of you may have not. I was breaking down how anyone can achieve 100 grand a month in revenue. 
uh, quite easily by creating a brand new site. And I achieved that within 12 months. I didn't have to use my name. I also out marketed other sites by just creating a ton of in-depth content. I built relationships. And again, I was doing this without my name. So it was a guy named Mike who was creating all the relationships. I was just giving him the keys to doing it, such as what I'm teaching you. And you'll learn a lot of that next week in the link building section. Uh, and it's not that hard. The funny thing with all this SEO stuff and what you're learning in SEO Unlock, most people don't do well because they don't put in the time. If you put in the time, you'll do well. It's really not that hard. Here's a overview, right? As you can see from the screenshot, 112 grand in revenue. And I think we hit this on the 10th or 11th month. Um, so we had one or two, we beat it by one or two months. As you can see, total subscribers on the left, the email stats were piling up pretty fast. And then if you look now, you won't see the link count because I ended up selling the site. It was called Nutrition Secrets. I sold them to Legion Athletics. Their rankings have gone through the roof. They took that site, combined it with theirs. It was one of the best buys that they ended up doing, which was quite lovely and amazing for them. Funny enough, I should go create a case study from them. Right, Jared? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll go hit them up. I'll get a case study. Um, and they do Amazon as well. I've helped them a lot with Amazon. They've crushed it. And, it, you know, speaking of the case, say the 100K challenge, uh, you can go download the reference. It's within your SEO Unlock portal. But, yeah, I just want to first go over the content types, and I believe this is where we take a break. And then we're going to go into, you know, more things like the secret sauce to really getting out there and making your content more popular. But the big thing is with content – test out all different types of video types and when you test them out or video text audio so in other words all different types of content types in addition to that you know you have to do them for a while content marketing doesn't work within just three months but once you do them all you'll start to notice you'll build a big brand over time um and with content marketing actually it's not where we take a break we're now going to be going into the 10 commandments of content outlines so now that you got the content types, let's go into the how you can end up creating an amazing outline. And this is one of the real reasons that my content does well. And I'm going to break down the exact steps that we take to create the outlines for our content pieces. And we don't just do this for neilpatel.com. We do this for any of our sites. So first is word count. What we found is when you take your competitor's content and you just create more detailed versions that are more thorough, naturally you'll have more word count and over time you'll just outrank them. We've done extremely well with this concept. A lot of people are like, oh no, I don't know if we should be doing this and they make excuses, but we found this to work extremely well for us and it's just something that you need to push hard on, right? And you should do it as much as possible. Um, and when you end up creating super thorough content that's detailed in length, I kid you not, like I was talking with Mike from Dr. Axe, and I was like, what was the secret for you doing better? And he's just like, Neil, as you already know, just more detailed content. I'm like, exactly. He's just writing better content than everyone in this space. He wasn't coming up with new topics. It was just more detailed. And if you do that over and over again, it adds up. The second is tone, right? So you have your musketeer persona. If you're talking to them in a way that communicates with your ideal audience that they understand, like if it's casual, if it's intent-based, right, you're using stories, all of this helps. And when you do this and you're being more positive versus negative, you'll find that people engage with your content, they keep sticking around, they come back. If you're really negative with your tone, then eh, you're going to find a lot of people who are just going to be like, all right, let's kick rocks. I'm not going to keep coming back. All you are is negative. You're never positive about anything. You need, in other words, be realistic. You don't have to be hype, hype, hype like Tony Robbins, but you need some sort of tone that people can relate to that does motivate them, that gets them into, kicks their, you know, tushies and gets them into high gear. You also want to use the proper framework, and especially in the introduction. Here's what I mean by this. Most people, when they're writing their introduction, they don't hook people in. You can do this by asking a question. You can do this by stating a fact. You can do this by storytelling, right? The possibilities are endless. But you need to hook people in. 
And as I give an example in the third point, even simple words like imagine, right? If I start some start a sentence with imagine, imagine ranking at the top of Google, what would that do for your business? Right? And then I go into how you can do that. You see how that can hook people in? And it's so simple because if your introduction sucks, even if the rest of your content's amazing, no one's really going to read the rest of your site. You also, when you're having your introduction, you need to pre-sell on why someone should read the rest of your content. It's not just about baiting someone with the first sentence. If you can't pre-sell them on the rest of your information, you're not going to do well. This is why Apple does so well with their launches. They always have events around it. They talk about what they're going to do. And it's kind of funny. Think about it. Everyone's talking about the Jeff Walker product launch formula. You know who does the biggest launch out of any company that I know? Apple. Every time they crush it. They beat everyone's launches. They just release the iPhone. Boom. Billion dollars right there, right? Technically, it's probably like a few billion dollars, if not more. But it's just crazy. And they build awareness. They build the excitement for every single product that they're releasing. They don't just go from idea to event. They go all the way from idea to announcement to making money, a new announcement, making more money, another announcement, making more money. And you see the pattern, right? That's pretty much what they're doing. That's the art of pre-selling. It's continually selling and announcing new things to get people re-engaged and hooked. Once you do that, you need to start using stories, right? Within your blog posts, you need to start using storytelling. Storytelling is the best way to hook people in. Then when you hook people in, you can start diving deeper into things like the problems, the deeper problems that they have that you're trying to solve. So for example, right? What are the symptoms of the problems that your readers face? How can you address them? What causes these problems to occur? Listing them out, discussing them within your blog post helps. Then you want to use data. What data can back up these problems, the solutions? Why do these problems matter? And how can this all be fixed? By breaking this all down within your content, people are much more likely not just to read your text, but then later to convert into a customer. And that's a big point. I remember I was talking to Ramit Sethi. Back in, I think it was around 2012 when I first met him, somewhere around there. He's like, Neil, you won't do as well with your site because you're not teaching people that you sell. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you just educate, but you don't ever discuss problems and solutions and how you can help people with these solutions. And I'm like, that's true, right? What is the solution that solves people's problems? What is that solution on your end? How does that look? Can you use a story to explain it and get people really engaged so they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to engage with this. Yeah, let's keep cranking, right? I want to figure out if I can work with you. I want to figure out if we can do more. It doesn't have to stop. And that's where you get into number six, which is your subtle musketeer intent. You want to hide your intent in plain sight. In other words, you want to be direct about your intent, but you want to blend it in in which – you're making it related to what you're offering and what you're writing about. For example, Jared, you guys do skincare, right? What's one of your blog posts on skincare that educates people that's related to your product? The top 40 things. When we just releases the top 40 things you need to know about vitamin C products. Okay, so he has one on top 40 things you need to know about vitamin C products. And how many times do you link to your own products? Oh, gosh, quite a few. More than two or three times? Yeah. So he's linking quite often to his own products, and at the same time, he's discussing everything about vitamin C. You're discussing the problems, the solutions, why you need to use it, and why wouldn't people buy his products once he's figured out how to relate to his ideal musketeer? Number seven, business wins. You want to share business facts, such as big wins that you have and ways that you can help other people as well. This is huge. This is why case studies convert so well. Testimonials are smaller examples of this. Um, but by doing all of that, you're going to be better off, right? It's all about case studies, testimonials, showcasing your big ones so people can relate and understand, hey, you can help them too. So internal links, right? 
this is a huge one that I see people forgetting. If you're going to write content and you don't internal link, your content's not going to rank well. Make sure your anchor texts are natural when you're internal linking. But by doing this, all your content will get ranked better and it'll all flow well together. You also want to personalize your content by adding your own voice, your own opinions, your own stories, things that can't be replicated by other people. It'll make your writing stand out. And this is why personalization is huge. It also causes people to relate to you and your brand, which will cause your conversions to go up. You also want to source your materials. If you're not backing up your claims, people are going to call you out on your bullshit. Make sure you source things. If you don't source things, you're just going to be an average Joe who's just writing content like everyone else and won't give a reason to follow. So here's some action items for you before we take our break. Download the 10 uh, commandments of content outlines. Right? Create your first outline based on the commandments worksheet and review your competitor's content with these commandments in mind. Right? So I want you guys to do that. We're going to take a five minute break and then we'll get into the second part. I believe today we have two breaks, but this is our first one. So let's reconvene for five minutes. Awesome. Uh, Neil, I have a question for you um, about the content, if I may, in the time that we have. All right. Go for it. Okay. So you have about, and I believe, you know, you still own equity in Cosmetrics. Cosmetrics has about 212 webinars on there. I just checked it this morning before the presentation. Um, so do you mind just walking people through the strategy of it and just how much, how much traffic and how many leads that specific strategy has? acquired for Kissmetrics because I know it's a lot and I'm pretty sure people want to hear that, right? Because, you know, when they hear a lot of strategies, they don't know what the implications of it is. So, yeah. So, with Kissmetrics, the webinars don't drive the most traffic. It drives the most qualified leads. Think of it this way. If someone sits through our webinar and they convert into a lead, they're much more likely to become a customer because you've already warmed them up, they're familiar with you, and they know what you're doing. Right? It's like it's something that people take for granted, but it's not just about pure lead volume and numbers, it's about quality as well. And that's what the webinar gets you, it gets you high quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. the webinar right now drives at least ten to twenty percent of their total leads. But the quality of the leads are higher, so I would assume that maybe quality wise I'm taking a guess here, but I would say it's like thirty to forty percent of the qualified leads. Hence, there's so many webinars. Awesome, awesome. Uh, while you were talking about pre-selling, I actually looked this up. Uh, so on the Forbes, uh, most powerful, most valuable brand in the world, Apple ranks number one. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal because their ad spend is only $1.8 billion. Whereas companies like Samsung, Google, they spend around about $3 billion and $4 billion and a lot more, and they don't get the same level of sales. For example, Apple's sale last year was about $214 billion, and then Samsung's sales was about $166 billion on double the ad spend of what Apple was spending. So yeah. I think pre-selling works. It does. Apple does really well from pre-selling. I don't see them getting away from that anytime soon. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, funny you mentioned that because uh, uh, today one of our clients, they did like, yeah, they, they did a launch and they're going to do a million bucks in sales, their first ever million bucks. We worked on that launch for like two months. It was pretty epic. Yeah. Yeah, so pre-selling works really well. <laughs> what else can we say, right? Yeah, it works extremely well. 